Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti. I am MrPhotographer.com. In this video, we're going to process an image beginning to end in Capture One, and we're actually going to use some layers to do a little dodging and burning. We're going to start out with an image that looks like this, and end up with an image that looks like this. We're going to be working on this image. I'm going to process it beginning to end, and along the way, I'm going to introduce layers. We're going to be doing a little bit of dodging and burning, and what we're going to be doing is going to be really rudimentary, easy stuff. In future episodes, I'll get more involved with layers, and we'll do some advanced techniques with them. Now, as you look at this image, you're probably thinking to yourself, this doesn't look like the Capture One workspace. That's because in our last video, I demonstrated how to customize the workspace so it's optimized for the way you process an image. I customize this workspace. If you haven't seen that video, I would encourage you to watch it. I really think it will, in the long run, help you better, more effectively and efficiently process your images. In the description below this video, I'll have a link to that video. Now on the right, I have all the tools laid out, the tools I most often use in the order I most often use them. I could jump around. I don't have to do them in this order. I could go to other tabs as well, but I'm going to stay right here and work through the tools. I usually start out with base characteristics and I go to where it says curve and I go and pick a profile first. Um, for this image, and it's a Fujifilm camera, Fujifilm calls them film simulation modes. And I'm probably actually just going to stay with the Fujifilm Provia standard profile. So I'm going to stay with that. And then I'm going to go down to white balance. And I actually think white balance is fine for this image, so I don't need to do anything there. Now, when I look at the image, I really look at it and I think, what's screaming out to me? Well, it's kind of dark, right? Especially the shadows are a little dark. So I'm just going to go to high dynamic range. And I'm going to go to the shadow slider, and I'm going to move that to the right just to open up those shadows a little bit. Next, I'll go to the highlight slider, and I'm just going to rein in the highlights just a bit. I'm going to bring that to the right a touch. So that's good. Now it looks pretty good. I'm going to go to exposure, and really, now that I've opened up those shadows, the exposure looks fine, and I don't think I need to do anything there. Um, contrast, I, I prefer to add contrast with the curve tool. So I'm going to do that in a moment. So I'm not going to move the contrast slider. I'm going to bring saturation up just a little bit. Just like eight. I think that's fine. I could always come back and readjust these. Um, we're going to go to levels. And I'm going to make the brightest parts of the image a little brighter by going to this far right line at the bottom and pull it to the left just a little bit. You can see. And then this far left line, I'm going to move that to the right just a touch to bring those shadows, like just the darker parts, the blacks in the image, make those a little darker. So it gives me a little more tonal depth in the image. Something like that. I think that's pretty good. Move, move mid-tones to the left a little bit as well. So I think that looks pretty good with levels. Uh, noise reduction. Now I'm in... With the hand tool here, I'm just going to double click on the image up in here in the sky so it zooms in. And you can see there really isn't any noise at all. Now, this was a very long exposure, so there is some blurring of the trees. That's fine. That's part of the aesthetic of the scene in the image. If you're interested in the actual exposure info, the camera settings, and the actual gear I used, in the description below this video, I'll have all that listed so you can check that out. So I'm just going to zoom back out by double clicking again. So I don't really need to do any noise reduction. I am going to add some clarity and structure. I'm going to stay with the natural method. Clarity is mid-tone contrast. So if I move that to the right, I'm increasing mid-tone contrast. If I move it to the left, I'm decreasing mid-tone contrast. I just want to increase it a touch. You can see I, I tend to not move sliders a great amount. Uh, everything's pretty like nominal. I don't do a lot. Now structure is edge sharpness. 
Um, if you move it to the right, you're increasing the edge sharpness. If you move it to the left, you're decreasing. I'm going to increase it slightly. I think that's probably good right there. Next is curve. I mentioned that before. I like to uh, play with contrast with curves. So I'm going to put a point right in the middle. And then I'm going to put a point like right around there and a point right around there. And then I'm going to go in this far left hand part. This is where the shadows reside and the blacks at the far, far left. I'm going to go right between that point and the end point, And I'm going to click there, put a point and pull this down. When you pull it down, you're going to make those darker parts even darker. And then I'm going to go to this upper right where the highlights and the whites reside. Click there and push up. So you're making those brighter. If you go up, you're making that part of the curve brighter. If you pull down, you're making that part of the curve darker. So I made the shadows darker and I made the highlights lighter. By definition, that's contrast. So I just added contrast to the image. And you know, a lot of times they call that an S curve, although mine doesn't look like an S curve. Mine doesn't look like anything. <laughs> so I'm going to go to the color editor. Now I prefer actually to work with the advanced color editor. So we're going to click there. And to do this, we need to get the color picker tool. And you can see it's conveniently located right here. We'll click. And with this, I'll pick a color. Now what I want to do is, is pick the brightest green in the image, like right over in here somewhere. So I'm going to pick the brightest green that's, you know, right there. And you can see when I do that, we have a range that has been chosen on the color wheel. So where I clicked is right here where this dot is, right in the middle. And then it got a range on either side of it. All the colors that are within this range will be affected by the sliders. Now, as far as the saturation tab is concerned, if you move that, of course, it increases saturation to the left, decreases to the left. If you want to kind of maximize the effect of saturation, what you need to do is make this piece of pie go more towards the middle of the circle and more towards the end of the circle. So you could kind of drag this out, you know, push it out. Or if you prefer, there's actually a little shortcut for that. Right here, there's a little icon here that looks like a piece of pizza to me, but I think it's meant to look like a pie. You click on that, you can see you maximize this automatically. So you can just do that very quickly. So your saturation slider will have maximum effect. So what I want to do is increase the saturation of that color range. By the way, one cool trick you could do here is if you want to see exactly what you're affecting, is down here where it says view selected color range. If I click on that, you'll notice that everything but really the green and the yellowish went black and white. So this bank is black and white. The sky up in here is black and white. So this is where I'm affecting. And then you could move this smoothness slider around. And if I move it to left, it kind of isn't as, um, uh, it's more precise, I guess. It's more just on that color. And if I move it to the right, you can't see it, but if you experiment with this with other colors, you'll know what I mean. It will um, affect more of the colors around it. So you can see how when I move it to the right, how it makes the edges fuzzier. So it's going to affect the colors around it. And if I move it to the left, it's refining the, the uh, selection. So it's just affecting the colors that are within this pie. And that's what I want it to do. I'm not going to change the hue at all. I just wanted that saturation turned up a little. And I think I want it a little brighter, but not that bright. Not that bright. So just like that. Now I'm going to go back here and click this box again so we get all the color back in the image. And that looks pretty good. I think I want to make the sky a little bit darker. So I'm going to click up in here on the blue sky. And what you'll see is we add another color to adjust here. And here's our pie. And I'm going to, I wanted to make it darker. So I'll go right to lightness and pull it down. And actually, I think that did a good job. So I'm not going to change the shape of this little pie at all. And I'm just going to leave it exactly like that. So I think that looks pretty good. I think that looks good. So uh, if you want to see like the adjustment turned off, just click on this little box and you could turn it off and on. And same for the, the trees and the grass with that adjustment, just uh, remove the check marks. Now I'm going to go back to the hand tool over here. So I'm done with the color editor. Uh, sharpening, I kind of like the softness. I don't really need it to be like so sharp. And we got a lot of blurriness up here from the wind because it was a long exposure. I used an ND filter. Again, all that info will be in the description below this video. I'm just going to just tweak it just a touch up. 
just because I feel like doing it. So I'm really done. I'm not, I'm going to add a vignette at the very end. I'm not going to do that right now. So we have this adjustment. Let's see where we stand. I'm going to do a before and after. I'm going to hold the alt or option key and it's alt if you have a PC. Option if you have a Mac. I'm going to go to this backwards arrow with that line and hold that alt or option key in. Click on this and hold in the left mouse button. There's before. Let go of the left mouse button and there is after. So it looks pretty good. But this bank, especially right in here, it's pretty dark. I want to brighten that up a little bit. I want to do a little dodging for that. And I want to brighten it up over here, so I'm going to dodge that. And the waterfall itself, I, I kind of like it bright, but I just want to see what it might look like. I'll just tone down a little bit. So I want to um, just burn that a little bit. So let's see what we could do. Now we're going to do this on another layer. The dodging on one layer, the burning on a third layer. Now to add a layer, we're going to go up here at the very top where I have the layers panel. Again, this is customized. Um, I'm just going to click the plus sign. So I added this layer right here. Now one unique thing is if you look, remember now I did high dynamic range. I moved highlights to the right and shadow to the right. See they're not moved at all. Um, over here I put saturation up. None of these have been adjusted at all because we're on this new layer. If I click on the background layer, you can see all my adjustments are there. So all the original adjustments I did are on this background layer. Now we're going to do new adjustments on layer one. Now I could uh, call this, I could name it by just double clicking and I'm going to call it dodging. Okay, so there is dodging on this layer. Now to dodge, you need to make something brighter. Now really what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up shadows. So I'm going to go right here and open up shadows. And you can see nothing's happening. That's because I got it painted in. So I'm going to use a brush. And the keyboard shortcut for the brush is the B key on the keyboard. So we have the brush. And you can see now we have a brush. And if you want to see the brush attributes, right click. And when you right click, the brush settings comes up. And you can see that um, opacity is all the way up, which is fine. And I'm going to keep flow um, maybe around 30 so that every brush stroke I do is only going to let 30% of the uh, maximum amount come through. So I could add to the effect. I could just put it on a little bit and maybe I'll have it unequal in parts like heavier in other parts. And um, I'm going to have auto mask off and pen pressure is fine and airbrush is fine. Uh, all that rest is fine right there and you could affect the brush settings there. You also could affect the brush settings with the bracket keys. The left bracket key makes the brush smaller, the right bracket key larger. Now I mentioned we have shadows up. So I'm going to have it way up so we could really see what we're doing. And I'm just going to paint in here and come in here. And you can see uh, come in there a little more. Now I'm brushing a second time, now a third time in there to make that a little brighter. In there, maybe up in there a little bit. Now I want to make it brighter over in here. Now make it brighter there. So that looks pretty darn good right there. I think I kind of lucked out where I put that shadows slider. I'm going to go down to saturation though and increase that. Now if you take a look, saturation is only affecting exactly where I paint it, right? So that's the idea of this extra layer where we're doing this. Now if you want to see the actual mask, hit the M key on your keyboard, M for mask, and you can see we get a red overlay and it shows you exactly where I painted, and exactly where I painted is exactly where these adjustments are affecting. So it's super simple. Hit the M key again to remove the mask. So there's before the dodging layer and there's after the dodging layer. Probably a little too bright. Let's bring shadows down a touch. A little more subtle than that. Believe it or not, it's kind of difficult to talk and actually process an image properly, um, at least for me. So that looks pretty good. I think we'll go with that. Now I mentioned I wanted to kind of rein in the highlights of this uh, waterfall. Now I'm going to um, I'm going to uh, use another a layer. So I could just click plus to add the layer, but I wanted to show you something very quickly. If you click and hold in on the plus sign, you'll see a little menu pops up. By default, if you just click that plus sign like I did a moment ago, we'll get an empty layer. I want to pick a filled layer for this just so I could show you what happens. 
Now we have a filled layer. It didn't change anything, right? And all these adjustments are um, readjusted. Let's go to high dynamic range. See, everything's readjusted. Our dodging layer has the adjustment we had. Our background layer has the adjustments we had. But this layer, not everything is not adjusted. If I hit the M key on the keyboard for the mask, you see it's affecting everywhere. So because of that, a lot of people prefer, I hit the M key again, by the way, to turn the mask off. A lot of key, people prefer this because what they'll do is then they will go to the adjustments and let's say to high dynamic range and they're going to rein the highlights in and they're going to look at what they're doing. And it, I liked what it did with this, right? But maybe I really didn't mind what it did to the sky, tell you the truth. But let's just pretend that I didn't like what it did to the sky. So um, again, I will undo it. There's before and there's after. So I kind of liked this reined in a little more, all right? So what I want to do, though, is I only want it on the waterfall. I don't want it anywhere else. But the mask is everywhere. See, I hit the M key. So what we need to do is invert the mask. And to do that, just right-click right on the layer and go to Invert Mask. And you'll see now it will take the adjustment away. We have the brush. Again, just hit the B key on the brush. And then what we're going to do is uh, brush attributes. And I, I liked it 100%. So I'm going to have flow all the way up. And I'm just going to paint it in on the waterfall. Now when you burn something, you're making it darker. When you dodge something, you're making it lighter. Even though I've got highlights, it might be you know counterintuitive. So we'll go in here and we're going to call that burning. Okay, so that's our burn layer, and we did that, and that's it. Now, I really, I think I'm done. I'm going to put a vignette in it. Now, I actually could put the vignette anywhere. Um, it's kind of odd the way vignette works, but I could put it on any layer, right? Double-click on the uh, slider itself to reset it, but I want to put all the base adjustments on the background. So I'm going to click on the background, and I'm going to put a dark vignette on it just a little bit. It helps draw everyone's attention more towards the middle. And we're done. Let's do a before and after. I'm going to hold that alter option key in. Click and hold on this back arrow. There's before. Let go. And there's after. Before. And after. So let's do it again. There's before. And there's after. So it looks pretty good. I think, I think, uh, you know, for talking during the video and trying to process an image, I think it looks okay. Probably could do a little better if I wasn't talking, but it looks pretty good. So I hope that helps you kind of dip your toe into layers, experiment with them a little bit, and do some right clicking on them so you could see the different things you could do uh, with the layers. Again, we're going to get more involved with layers in future episodes, and I hope this helps you best process your images in Capture One. Thank you, everyone that watches my videos. I truly do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.